ready for you. I figured I'd try it from here tonight, and I fear very tall. <laughs> Usually I'm down the earth, but I still do this. <clears throat> First, I want to, uh, I'm, I'm just thankful to be up here. It's like usual, I always, I can't say enjoy it, but it's a, it's a challenge for me to be up here. Yeah. And uh, it, it kind of grows on you, I guess. <laughs> Um, you know, I just want to commend all these, uh, these missionaries that are going out, uh, leaving Saturday morning and, and just the ones that put this whole, this whole ordeal together. And, uh, I know Jen and, and Jeremy had a big deal, to, uh, in, in it. I remember the, the meeting we had when we had that meeting that, that Saturday night and they, we had all these ideas of what was going to happen in, in the upcoming years since, well, we're moving forward. And I remember Jen having that, that idea about having a, a, a mission trip. And uh, honestly, I never thought it was going to happen this, the way it did, and I, I'm, I'm glad it did. And, uh, and I reaped the benefits. I got, I got Victoria going, and it's, it's just amazing. It's, it's great. And she's been blessed uh, beyond measure in this, during this whole trip, this whole pr uh, preparation for the trip, I should say. It's, it's amazing what, what God has done for her in, this, in that whole thing. And I'm just thankful for God for that, and, and I'm thankful for her willingness to, to step forward and do that. So I commend all of you. <clears throat> My, my study tonight, it comes from a, 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 a phrase, a question Pastor had brought forth about a, a couple of months ago, maybe a month or so ago. And he said something about, something to, to the effect about what did, what did uh, Paul have that gave him the tenacity to move forward the way he did, that, that, that fire that he had going forward. And uh, after that, let me pull this up real quick. <clears throat> After that, I started reading this, the uh, Martyrs book, and um, the, the, within the first paragraph, this came up, and hopefully it comes up. There it is. And this phrase came up, and it, was, and it just fit right in. If I can find it. I should have put it up. Here we go. Okay, this, this is a phrase, this is a, the, uh, in the opening statements of the whole book. It says, though one apostle had betrayed him, though another had denied him under the solemn sanction of an oath, and though the rest had forsaken him, unless we may ac accept the disciple who was known as the high priest, the history of his resurrection gave a new direction to all their hearts. And after the mission of the Holy Spirit imparted a new confidence in their minds, the powers <clears throat> with which they were endured, emboldened them to proclaim his name to the, con to the confusion of the Jewish rulers and the astonishment of the Gentiles pro proselytes. So that whole thing was, was once they got that, that, the gift of the Holy Spirit, that changed everything. Once that resurrection happened, and, that, and they had that, once they saw that happen, that changed, that changed their, their, their whole outlook and everything. And... Uh, and for me, that needs for me that I need to have that experience of that that, exper that experience of that, of that Holy Ghost experience that's going to change my life, that puts me out no matter what. That we push forward towards God. <clears throat> so that being said, I want I, I after that I, I brought it over to um, I started thinking about David and um, what what drove what what did God have loved so much about David. Uh, 
he, had, he was a man of, uh, after God's own heart. And I started thinking, I, and you, you think about the life of David. David had such a, uh, he so much in the, in the, Old, in the Old Testament, he, they, they talk about him so much. And uh, the promises he had, look, look at the promise that that had brought forth. He was get, God was going to give him a son with, with a kingdom that was never going to end. And we all know that Jesus it says that in, I think, Acts. And, um, and, and I started out with, with David had a heart after God and for his people. <clears throat> and, and first of all, Ga the first thing David was, was he, he was a shepherd. David had a shepherd's heart. And... Um, He cared. He cared for the people. He he loved the people so much, and and I, I came up with this this scripture here. First uh, Chronicles twenty one seventeen. I think I'm in King James. It says, and and this is when uh, after after David had numbered the people against God's will, and 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 uh, they went through the, the whole thing of the, uh, the he gave him the choice of what to do. And he chose three days with, with God's wrath. And uh, it says, And David said unto God, Is it not I that commanded the people to be numbered? Even I have sinned and done evil indeed. But as for these sheep, what have they done? Let thine hand, I pray thee, go, O Lord my God, be on me and on my father's house, but not on thy people, that they should be plagued. So right, about, they, right away that shows me a part of David that he... He took responsibility for what he did. He didn't want to go into other people, but he took the responsibility for himself. He loved the people so much that he decided to take it on himself. Then I started thinking about with, um, and he talks about, David talks about him being, uh, uh, fighting against the lion and the bear. And uh, to save his sheep, he took these extreme measures of, of taking a lion by the beard and, and tearing up this lion and this bear, killing these bears, just to save his sheep. And that just shows you the heart that, 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 that David had. <clears throat> and then I like the uh, confidence that, that David had in, in God. And I thought about the, um, I started thinking about when David went against Goliath. And um, right here it says, and then David said to the Philistine, you come with me with a sword and a spear and, a ja and with a javelin, but I come, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. The God of all armies of Israel, whom you have defied, this day the Lord will deliver you. The Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give you. I will give the dead bodies of the hosts of the uh, to the hosts of the Philistines. Uh, this day the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, and that and all the earth know that there is God of Israel. God had. To, I mean, David had to touch this, this confidence in God that he looked at this this giant. He, David had nothing. David had just had five stones, and uh, he looked at this giant and says, "What are you? What are you doing? What are you talking about? My God's name like that?" And even when he went down to when he went down to deliver the food, he's like, "What's this giant talking about our God that way? How can he stand that?" I mean, what's, what's it, what are you doing? And uh, that's that's just the, the heart that David had, and I just I just love hearing about David. And 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 another thing David had was he had a, a heart of repentance. And you look start looking through Psalms, which we're going to go through some tonight, and. Um, this, this heart, uh, you see all, the, we know David wasn't perfect. He, he did a lot of bad, he screwed up a lot, yeah. which, make, which for me, it makes him uh, uh, very easy to, to relate to because we all screw up a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's true. I mean, which, who of us hasn't screwed up in here? I mean, it's so uh, it makes him very relatable. But, but the heart that he has, the, the heart of repentance, it's, it's just amazing what, the stuff that he, that he, that he talks about. Um, and I have this one. David had an open heart towards God. And in, uh, in Psalm 17, it says, You have tested my thoughts and examined my heart in the night. You have scrutinized me and found nothing wrong. I am, de I am determined not to sin in what I say. I have followed your commands, which keep me from uh, following cruel and evil people. My steps have stayed in your path. I have not wavered from following you. Um, David had a heart that... that, that God can even look into, and, and he, he had an open heart towards God. His heart is always open to him, and, and he, could, he allowed God to look into his heart. Uh, we, always have, we always talk about those hidden places that, that, we, that we hide from God. And I think uh, God, uh, David is very open and, and, and willing for God to, to, because of the heart that he had for God, for, the, for the, the pleasure that he wanted to bring the Father. 
And that being said, that's part one. I'm going to be try to be fast tonight. <clears throat> then I went to uh, Chronicles 13. And we all know the story about the... Uh, about us bringing back the ark. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, David had become king and decided that, that the ark, it was in uh, Abinadad's house, and uh, they were going to bring it back to, uh, to, to David's, David's uh, the city of David, back to Jerusalem. And... Um, so it starts off by saying that David consulted the, the captains of the thousands and the hundreds with every leader. And David said unto all of them, I'm going to skip some of this soon. So it says, David said unto all the congregation of Israel, if it seems good to you and, and that it be of the Lord God, our God, let us send abroad unto our brethren everywhere um, that is left in Israel and all of them the priests. Uh, I'm going to skip all that. And I'm going to make this fast. And let us, bring us the, let us bring the ark of our God back to us, for we inqui uh, inquired not all the days of Saul. So while, while all the days were in Saul, there, it was down in, the, in, in that house, Abinadad's house, Abinadad. <clears throat> and all the congregation, uh, congreg I got to slow down. And all the congregation said that they would do so, for the thing was right in their eyes of all the people. So David gathered all Israel together from Shehor of Egypt, even, and, and I want to skip all that. Okay. Well, I don't want to, I want to get to some points. And David went up and all Israel to <laughs> Bala, that is, and I'm not going to attempt that word, <clears throat> which belonged to Judah, to bring up the thence of the ark of the Lord that dwelleth between the cherubims whose name is called on it. Now, first of all, uh, I should read, let me read this first one. He's kidding with me. All right. Okay, and David and all, David and all Israel played before God with all their might, with singing, with harps, with uh, psalteries and timbrel, timbrels, with, with cymbals and trumpets. And when they came to the threshing floor of Chidon, Uzzah put forth his hand uh, to hold the ark where the oxen had stumbled, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and smote him because his hand was at the ark, and he died there before God. All right. And um, I started looking at that. And Uzzah, Uzzah means strength. So Uzzah must have been a, a pretty big guy, God, guy of strength. And uh, his brother is uh, Ahio, and his, that name is brother. And his, his brother was ahead of him, and, 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 and uh, Uzzah was behind And the place that they went to, Bela, means mistress or familiar spirit, which I thought was really interesting because me and uh, Amy were having a conversation a couple of days before about this whole thing, before I looked that up and then uh, that came up. And I started thinking that the, uh, that Ark was, it was in Abinadad's house uh, for at least 20 years. And, and Uzzah, is Abinadad's uh, son, Uzzah and, and, and uh, Ohio. So they lived in, they lived in the same house uh, with, that, with that ark for 20 years. So I started thinking, after 20 years, they probably got very familiar with the ark and um, uh, very, very maybe, uh, I can't think of the word I want to say, but very familiar, very comfortable, thank you, very comfortable with the ark. So they didn't care. Uh, I, I was going to say he didn't care, but he was very uh, at ease with the ark. So I think when he was going, um, out of his own strength, he decides to help the ark. And I think it's just uh, just as because he, he not, I don't think he lost respect for the ark, but he lost the uh, uh, reverence maybe for the ark, where it wasn't as he didn't think it's as important to to not follow the rules. And then another thing, um, David, I think David knew better how to bring the ark up. I think David uh, was taught in the word. I don't think he was, I think because, because of his background, his, uh, his, his, 
uh, where, he, where his, his heritage, I think he was brought up, he, he, I think he knew the word. And uh, so I think he knew better than, than to bring the ark up in, on, on a cart. And the other thing is, the, when, the, when, the, uh, ark, when the ark originally left the Philistines, when the Philistines got rid of the ark, the amazing thing to me was, it says, the Philistines put the ark on a new cart with, with, uh, with, with cows, and they sent it away. And when the, the ark left the Abinadad's house, it says the uh, ark left on a new cart. So the same way that it came to, the, uh, to his house is the same way that it left the house. We can't determine what, how things happened before, is, is how, how it should go. We need to stay in the word, and we need to word, know where the word, uh, where where it should, where the word tells us how uh, the word tells us how to do something. <clears throat> and I, I have here the, the uh, it says here that the, the singers were singing, the uh, dancers were dancing, so they were having a good time. Everybody thought it was a, it was I mean it was a good thing. They all agreed that it was a good thing, and it was a good thing to bring it back up. And. Uh, I can imagine what happened as soon as that happened. Everything must have just stopped right away. They said, well, where's the closest place? We're going to drop the ark off over there, and, and, and we're done. David, David said, he says, I, I'm, he says I, I'm not bringing that back up here, you know, my, my interpretation. But um, <clears throat> so then we go to uh, First Chronicles chapter 15. And um, the first thing it says, and in, in, it starts off in chapter, uh, chapter 15, is, uh, David prepared a tent. He had some place. Uh, pre he prepared a tent, and he had houses built for himself. First of all, the first first time they brought it up, they had no place to bring it. There was nothing prepared to bring the ark to. We have to be prepared for the ark to dwell in us. We have to have a uh, we have to prepare ourselves to have the ark dwell in us, or the Holy Ghost, and bring it back down to us. Uh, we can't just come come and, and expect that it's going to work out right when uh, everything's going good, so it's going to dwell with us. We have to have our, uh, a daily preparation. It's just not a once-a-week a once preparation coming into here. It's a daily preparation that we have to have. Um, and then if I go to chapter 15, okay, and, uh, he plays... And then he decides that he wants to do it God's way. He's going to uh, carry the ark back. Uh, nobody at the, but the Levites can carry the ark back. And we all know the story. That, and everybody brought, uh, they all, the Levites carried the ark. And they had the, um, oh, let me see, let's see what this is. Really good. And David assembled the, the children of Aaron and the Levites. And I'm going to skip all that because that's not necessary. And David called for Zadok and Abiathar, the priests of, of the Levites, and Uri Uriel, Isaiah, and Joel, Shimea, El Eliel, and Abinadad. Not Abinadad, but Abinadad. And, um, and he said unto them, you, you are the chiefs of your fathers of the Levites. Sanctify, sanctify yourselves. Here you go again, getting prepared. Sanctify yourselves, both ye and your brethren, that you may bring the ark of the Lord back <coughs> of Israel the ark of the Lord God of Israel unto its place that I have prepared for it. There it goes again, being prepared. Um, so the priests and the Levites sanctified themselves and got ready, and they chose the people to carry it. And now this is, this is, this is really neat. Um, they go through a list of people here, which I don't want to read. Um, he told, David told the Levites, you, the, uh, Zadok and, and Abiathar, you, you get the people together, you get the musicians together, you get the singers together, it's all in your hand, you're supposed to do it. You guys carry it, and we're gonna go from there. So they, get, they gather this group of people together, and these are all the singers, the musicians, and the uh, gatekeepers. And listen to their names. Uh, I don't, I didn't, I'm not gonna read their, their names out here, but I'm gonna give you the translations what they are. These are their names. Righteous, faithful, gatherer, enduring, whom jo Jehovah remembers, made, made bold by God, God lives, whose father is God, Yahweh has built up, work of Jehovah, gift of Jehovah, whom God distinguishes, possession of Jehovah, and treasure of God. 
Now that's a group of people that, that I want working for me. <laughs> so from there, and we know the story, they bring the ark back, and we're going to get into it maybe if I can after a little bit. And um, David goes crazy dancing, for, not, not crazy mental, but he goes crazy dancing. Um, and he dances his socks off, and, and, and then his, his wife doesn't care too much about that, which I don't know how Amy would feel if I start dancing my socks off. But, um, <laughs> uh, so, so, and she gets upset at him, and, and he tells her they get into an argument, and I'm going to try to save that for after because there's more in there. But that's part two. Now I'm going to go to part three. I hope I'm not losing anybody here. I'm trying to be as, as quick but simple, but letting it out. <clears throat> okay, part three is praise. You can't talk about David without talking about praise. And I know Brother Bud went over this one time. Years, I don't remember how long it was now. I can't remember if it was here or, or where it was. And I've heard it before, once before on... On a, on a podcast, and he started talking about the Hebrew words of praise. And uh, do, you, do you remember how long ago that was? Do you have any idea? Any clue? No. So I, fig I figured it was, it was worth uh, bringing, it, bringing it up again, just as a remembrance. And, uh, and we have some new faces here since then, and, and it's something that's uh, very simple and practical, and I think it's uh, something that we all just need to just go back and look at again. <clears throat> it doesn't hurt us to look at it again. <clears throat> All right, so, so uh, words for Hebrew praise. The first one, uh, there, I don't have these in a, in a specific order. And the reason was I started thinking about it, and I started thinking about, well, what's the order I can put these in and, and trying to get my mind to, to, to order it. And, and all of a sudden, I got this check in my spirit. It's like, and, and it was uh, don't order it because there is no order. There's no way that... that the, uh, God may want to do it a different way than, than what you're trying to portray it for. So that's why I have these not in a, in a specific order at all. And um, the first word is, is yada. And it means to <clears throat> extend the hand uh, in surrender or to confess. So first, uh, it's all, you're doing is, all you're doing is lifting your hands up and confessing to God. It says... Um, Literally to hold out hand, uh, physically to throw at or <clears throat> throw at or away, especially to revere or worship uh, with extended hands. Uh, this intensively, and I wrote here with extreme concentration. That mean, that that means uh, don't worry about the person next to you, worrying about what they're what they're thinking. And I, I really appreciate and I, I'm just throwing this out there, but I really briefly appreciate. Nate, because I'm up here and I can see Nate. Nate will just all of a sudden just throw his hands up and start worshiping God, and and that's encouraging to me. Not only as a, a father, not only as his father, but but seeing the uh, the youth of this house move into something different, uh, something more into God, and and I just appreciate that. I just appreciate that that that, that movement. I mean, even something so simple as lifting your hands, it becomes a a, a, a touch for everybody else, a, a blessing for other people. <clears throat> To cast out, con confess, <clears throat> praise. And I, I the first, first uh, scripture I thought about was, cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. So first thing you're doing when you're raising your hands is you, you're giving up all your, everything that's holding you down, you're lifting it up and giving it up. That's, that's, that's the, the main thing about it is giving it up, surrendering all. And I got a couple of scriptures here I want to read. I wrote them here in King James, but I, I like, as I went back, I saw them in other translations that I like a little bit better. Psalms 32. You guys don't have to turn to any of these, so don't worry about it. Yeah, 
Okay. It says uh, in verse 5, I told you my sin. I told my sin to you. I did not hide my wrongdoing. I said, I will tell you my sins. To, I will tell my sins to the Lord. And you forgave, my, you forgave the guilt of my sin. So first thing, that's, that's what I was just talking about, is you giving it up. Confessing your sin, giving it up. <clears throat> and then Psalms 42. Uh, yeah, Psalms 42. Uh, why art thou, count, uh, why art thou count, cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall let yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. Um, that, that this quiet is, is anxious. Why, why are you so anxious? Why, what's wrong with you, my soul? Why are you so anxious? And he's talking to himself, soul, you, you're, I will still praise God. I will praise him. I shall yet praise him. Even though you get downcast, you got you to learn to speak to yourself. And, and when, you praise, uh, when you praise God, that changes your, the whole, your whole mindset, your whole because it's taking the mindset off of yourself and start putting it onto God. Um, <clears throat> and praise, is, it's, it's not hard. Um, you just start praising him. What, what are words of praise? I mean, just think it, it starts simple and, and it, it doesn't have to be a big profound, uh, at some point, you, I mean, you can praise him all, praise him all the time. It's not... It's a, the, the Bible says, your praise will ever be on my lips. So, same thing as, as praying. I'll pray without ceasing. ceasing. <clears throat> Word number two. Well, i got to click it up here. Word number two is tawda. <clears throat> to sing with hands extended. Sacrifice of praise. This comes from the same word as yada. Yada is actually, this comes from the word, uh, yada is in this word. So it it it, it, it uh, brings together hands hands extended and sacrificing yourself, and it says the uh, Hebrew meaning of it is uh, properly an extension of the hand by implication, a vowel, an open that means an open statement of, of affirmation, frank acknowledgement or admission, or usual adoration, uh, and it says specifically a choir of worshipers. <clears throat> Um, in Leviticus 22.29 uh, 22, says, and when, the, and, and when ye will offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving unto the Lord, offer it at your own will. In Jeremiah 17.26, <clears throat> and they shall come from the cities of Judah and from the places of, about Jerusalem <clears throat> and from the land of Benjamin, from the plain of and from the mountains, and from the south, bringing burnt offerings, sacrifice, sacrifices, meat offerings, and incense, and bringing sacrifices of praise unto the house of the Lord. The third one is halal, <clears throat> which means, uh, which uh, you think of halal, what's the first word everybody thinks of? Hallelujah, that's where it comes from. Uh, to be clear, usually of color, to shine, hence to make a show, to boast, to be clamorously foolish, to rave, <clears throat> and uh, to, I can't say that word, uh, to celebrate, I forget what that word is. <clears throat> so to be clamorously foolish, this is when you want to get a little crazy in God, and uh, get crazy in your dance, get, get beside yourself, the way, the way David got beside himself, it says he danced before God. When, when they brought the ark back, he danced before God. And uh, they said he got naked, but he didn't really get naked. But he, he, what he did is he, he stripped himself of his, his reputation. He took his, old, his reputation. He, he was a king. He had a kingly reputation. I mean, think about Trump coming in here and, and foolishly dancing before God. I mean, that's, that's what people were seeing. I mean, and... and that's what it was. I mean, you got this king dancing crazily before God. And, but the funny thing is, the only one that, they, that complained was, was, was his wife. <clears throat> and I, I don't want to get there yet. All right. 
Psalms 111, uh, 111 verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. <clears throat> I praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. Yes. Here goes another one. The dead, the dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. <clears throat> yeah, if you don't praise him, then and the dead don't praise the Lord. So God doesn't want a, a people that are going to uh, sit around quiet. <clears throat> Lots of noise. <laughs> that's, that's one thing I, I thought about. We think of praise and we think of coming in here and, and singing the songs and, and just, if we feel, maybe we maybe get, get a little touch and, and get a little dancing or, or something. But is, you start thinking about it. Is he worthy of praise? Is he worthy of us to get crazy? Of all that he's done, that's the way you got to think about it. Do it not, don't do it because, because you, you want to make yourself feel better, but do it because he's worthy of it. I mean, all that he's done, he's worthy for us to get crazy. And he doesn't need our praise. He doesn't need, he's not a God up there that, that has a low self-esteem saying, they don't, they don't love me. He's not up there saying that. I think he takes joy in, in, in he takes joy in, 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 in us praising him. He, yeah, I got that going. But, and I, I thought about, I, I thought about when I first brought Nate to a um, to a Yankees game, and and I remember the first, his face when he first saw the stadium, and sitting in the seats and, and that that excitement that he had going, we were going throughout the stadium, seeing all the parts of the stadium, all the way up to the top, all the way down to the bottom, and and the excitement that he had, it just brought joy to my heart, and uh, and that's the same way God feels. God God see, gets you, sees your excitement and He gets happy for your excitement. So that's and that's what it's all about. <clears throat> the next one I want to do, number four. I got one more scripture for number, <clears throat> number three. Uh, praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing your praises unto his name, for it is pleasant. Uh, number four is going to be uh, Tehillah. <clears throat> and I got that as your personal song to God, your spontaneous song. Now we we come in and we sing these songs up here, which is good. It, it gets us it gets us going. I, I, if I could, sorry, if I can say that. <clears throat> but um, those songs are just and, and and I think Brother Bud always used to say it, and it's stuck in my mind. Those are just like the card that you buy at the at the at the store, and it, it, it tells your wife you, how much you love her and stuff like that. But if you just give, give her that card without writing your your own your own little uh, two cents in there, that card doesn't really mean much to her. You got to add that that extra writing into it and uh, that's what these songs are these songs just get just uh get you moving but then you got to add your own and i, I got in there the, the tahila is actually the the uh song that god wants to sing through you and and i've seen it a few a few times where savani is uh, uh stepped out in that in that area and all of a sudden she's playing and then all of a sudden she'll stop singing and then she starts prophesying and she starts sing, singing the song of the lord and that's and that's what tahila is is that other that spontaneous song that 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 has that has no no words, that has no written words to it, and you can't take uh, uh, you, a lot of these uh, like Bethel and stuff like that. These these artists that, that you listen to online, they get these these songs, and they get these spontaneous songs that they sing, and they're very good. I mean, they, they they're good on there, but you can't take them. You can't apply them to yourself because they're not your song. They they're a song. They're good for them to sing because they 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 in that whatever situation is. They're in that situation, but you have to make the song your own. It has to be a song that comes out of your own heart. <clears throat> All right. Um, Tehillah. Your personal song to God, a spontaneous song, the song that God wants to sing through you. It comes from the Hebrew, is, it means laudation, which means commendation. Uh, specifically, uh, I like this, a concretely, a hymn of praise. Praise song of hymn of praise. So it's a song that he's singing out. <clears throat> praise of adoration, thanksgiving, paid to God. And uh, I got a couple of scriptures here. Uh, Deuteronomy 10. Uh, he is thy praise and he is thy God. He has done all these things, great and terrible things which thine eyes have seen. And then Psalms 22, 3. But thou art holy. And thou inhabitest the praises of Israel. 
which is what she said before. And I started thinking about inhabiting, and, and uh, the, the other word that they use is in, in, enthroned. So he's enthroned upon our praises. He's, he's lifted up in our praises. He's in our praises. It's, it's not, we're not just praising out to him, but he's in us, praising out through us, praising. So it's a, it's a big circle. He's praising us through him, praising him. It's, I mean, if Christ is in us, he's praising us. He's praising himself through us. <clears throat> Uh, Psalms 40, verse 3, He had put a new song in my mouth, uh, even praise unto our God. Many shall see and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Um, and in Psalm 51, I have here, O Lord, open, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. In Psalm 51, uh, that, that psalm, to me, I, I, I kind of like that psalm, not, not just the whole intent of the psalm, but the psalm is about after he, he uh, had that whole issue with Bathsheba. And if, if you go back and you read, and I was, I was reading it today, I was reading in, um, in Chronicles, or, or Samuel, which I forget which it was, but I was reading about that whole situation with Bathsheba and then uh, with, his, with his child that died. And it says, after that, he went in and he worshipped. And, and then after that, I thought about the scripture here. While he was in there worshiping, he's probably in there writing this whole psalm right at that same point in time. Because this whole, this whole psalm is a psalm of repentance. And uh, at one point he says, he says uh, uh, burnt offerings aren't, isn't, isn't what you want. He's like, it's a, it's a broken heart and a contrite spirit. We've got to be broken before God for God, to, for God to use us. And this is even the time before the Holy Ghost is filled in him. I mean... And he's saying, this is my, I can't give you, I can't give you a, a, an, an ox or, or, or whatever it is, a burnt offering. That's not going to do it. That's not going to, that's not going to rec reconcile what I've done. He says, it's in my heart. That's why, that's why it's got to be changed. <clears throat> so that whole psalm is, I mean, if you, if you go back and you read it and you, and you take the, the you, you put them together, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing to, to see what happened and, and what his response was to that, to that whole situation. He knew he screwed up. I mean. What's that? No, I didn't. But the prophet had to tell him anyway. All right, number five. <clears throat> it's to sing with instruments. This is all for my worship team here. <clears throat> my musicians out there. <clears throat> um, to striking with the fingers, properly to touch the strings or parts of a mus musical instrument, play upon it to make music accompanied by the voice. Hence, to celebrate in song and music, give praise, sing forth praise and psalms. To sing, sing praise, and make music. Um, I see I'm a musician, but I think we're all, all of us in here are musicians. Uh, if you guys have two hands, you guys are musicians. Um, I remember when, before I, I came up, in, up into playing the bass, and even when I go, when I'm out in the congregation, my, my instrument's the, uh, the seat in front of me. I've always hit the seat in front of me. That's just my, <laughs> just a little input to my own life here. <laughs> It says, praise the Lord with harp, sing unto him the, with the psaltery and the instrument of ten strings. <clears throat> Make a joyful noise to, unto the Lord, all the earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice. Sing, sing praise. Sing unto the Lord with harp, harp, <clears throat> with the harp and the voice of the uh, and psalm. Sing loud. <clears throat> my, my thing is, I don't, I sing loud, but not with a mic, because then I'll scare everybody away. And, and Savani knows that. But um, we got to be, we got to not, not worry about whatever, and I'm saying that, but you have to worry about what everybody else thinks, and you just got to sing forth, and, and I mean, most of us don't have good voices, but God does it, God sees it in the heart, well, sure, God, God sees it in the heart, though, He's, he sees the intent of the heart, and not the, uh, not the, not the sound of the voice, <clears throat> Thank, thankfully, and He wants to sing loud, and <clears throat> let, let them praise His name in the dance, Sing praises, sing unto him with the timbrel and the harp. And for, for 
I don't see uh, Sam in here, but, but with the drums too. Number six. The pastor said I had five hours. So I don't know if you guys want to take like a, a break after like two hours or. or <laughs> um, number six is Barack. <clears throat> Barack. Uh, to kneel by implication, to bless God as an act of adoration. To bless, to kneel. Um, to bless, to be adored, cause to kneel. That's when, you're, that's when you submit yourself to God. Uh, you start lifting your hands and you end up on the ground kneeling before God. <clears throat> and then I thought about when, when, when uh, the kings used to come in, what did they do? They, they bow down and they kneel down before the, before the kings. And then I, there was this one word for uh, 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 worship, which I, which I saw, and it meant to, uh, to, to, to kiss or to, to throw a kiss. So it's not only, I, I, Tim says it all the time, and it is another for, a word for worship is to bow, to bend the knee. But another word, one is to kiss, and, and you're kissing the king, and, and you're just loving on him. <clears throat> um, I got a few scriptures here about, it says, uh, Bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reins also instruct me, in, uh, my reins also instruct me in the night seasons. And Psalms 18, it says, The Lord liveth and blessed my, my, be my rock. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. Uh, Psalm 72, 19, 72, 19. And blessed be his glorious name forever. Let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. Um, Psalms 89, 52. Blessed be the Lord forevermore. Amen and amen. Um, 95, 6. Oh, let us come worship and bow down. Let us kneel before our Lord, our Maker. <clears throat> so it's not only it's not only uh, lifting your hands, uh, acting foolishly, singing, uh, uh, playing the instruments, but it's also that that kneeling and bowing down. And it's a quiet time. It's uh, it, and I think we get so so. In praise, we get so so enamored with the uh, the sound and, and uh, the song coming forth. But sometimes you just need that quiet time, and you need that quiet time to listen to to hear what God's saying in that time. Because God God wants to to speak to us, and if we're always talking, we're not going to hear what He wants to say. So you have to have that quiet time, that that bowing down, that, that the time let just let Him be, let Him. And we, and I and I appreciate this 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 new team that's coming up. They're they're learning to allow that time in worship, and it's they're they're. And, and I think Savani's trying to teach them, don't, you just don't rush through the songs. Let, let, let that time come through and let that time just, just let it be the time of, of, of silence and, and just playing the, the instrument and, and let that song come forth. <clears throat> now I got this other word. You could, you could uh, put it in with praise, but shout. There's always got to be a shout. And the funny thing with this word is uh, I was looking up, I forget what, what I was looking up. Uh, it was a couple of nights ago, I think it was. And Nate's upstairs in his room. Amy was out someplace. And uh, I started looking up this word. I'm looking up the scripture. And the first, whatever, I can't, I, I should have wrote it down. I don't remember what it was. But the scripture says something about shout. And all of a sudden, I, um, the, the, the Hebrew word for shout is ruah. And I'm and I'm I got the the, uh, the radio on. I got music playing, and uh, Eddie Eddie James is on. And uh, he comes out. He has his new. I guess it's a new CD. Amy, Nate says the song was older too, but I don't know. All of a sudden, you start hearing his word, Rua, Rua. And I'm I'm reading, and all of a sudden, I I, I was it's kind of in the back of my head. I was in, I was in paying attention. And then all you hear it gets louder and louder. The song progresses, it gets louder. So I, I, I stopped it and I looked at my phone and it's, sure enough it says Ruah and it's, it's praise, uh, shout. And then the, the, the song starts talking about shout of Zion and, and shouting unto the Lord and all this kind of stuff. I was like, okay, that, that's, that's kind of crazy to get this going on. And, and it's, it's like, okay, God's saying, it's like God's saying, okay, throw that word in there, throw a shout in there too. <laughs> so I threw a shout in there. 
I think it's something I need to do more often is get that shout. <coughs> we, uh, oh, we're all going to do it afterward. Don't worry. <coughs> I'm not laughing. Um, when I think of shout, I thought about right away when they're talking about shout. Uh, let me say it first. In Arua, it, it means uh, to mar by breaking, to split the ears with sound. Shout for alarm or joy, blow an alarm, cry an alarm, a, a cry alarm aloud out, uh, destroy, make joyful noise, smart, which is pretty weird, uh, shout for joy, sound an alarm, and triumph. <clears throat> so I, right away you think of shout. First, first story I think of is uh, is uh, them going around at the uh, Jericho. And, and before they had the victory, first thing they had to do is shout. Before the walls fell, the shout had to come forth, forth first. And then I thought about uh, Gideon. When Gideon had his, uh, the 300, they went against the army. They had, they had the lamps and, and it, sword of the Lord. And it says, uh, say first say uh, for the Lord and for Gideon. So before they even got down there, they had to declare for the Lord and for Gideon. First thing they had to do, they had to shout out which, which uh, uh, Chris Valentin says that's, that's the worst uh, 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 attack uh, plan ever because you're, you're telling the, the army that you're there by shouting. <laughs> but um, a shout's got to come before victory comes. Sometimes you got to shout it forth first. You got to let that, you bring that declaration forth. <clears throat> and, and I thought that was, that was pretty, uh, pretty in, intense. Um, when, the, when the Ark of the Covenant, the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted with great shout, so that the earth rang again. <clears throat> and, Dave, and David rose up in the morning. This is uh, uh, 1 Samuel 17. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper and took... Uh, okay, this talks about when he went down to see Jesse uh, with Goliath. And this is... Uh, and Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench of... He came to the trench as the host was going to, forth to fight and shouted for the battle. So, so there again, he shouted before he even went to battle. You get, always have the shout first. Um, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make, make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. And I want to read two other scriptures. And then I'm going to be done. Lots of it. Psalm 100. Okay, Psalm 100, just read the whole thing. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him, his presence with singing. <clears throat> know that the Lord, your, know that the Lord, he is God, and he hath made us, not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. And here we go now. It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Uh, that there is, is the hands lifted up. Uh, into his courts with praise. Um, that there, I think, was, I want to say it was Tauda. And then, the, uh, or Talia it was. And then, be thankful unto him and bless his name. And the last one was, was bending down. For the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever for all generations. So there showed us you start, you start at the beginning with your hands lifted up and end up with, down with your, with your uh, knees bent before him. And, and I think about that when you're going into the ark. You go to the outer court, the inner court, and the most holy place. The most holy place is a place of worship. When, you, when it's, The outer court is, is, is all the noise going on. The inner court is you and God together. And, 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 
and in the whole, most holy place, it's all God. And I started thinking about with, uh, with Amy. I come home from work, and I say, um, I start with Thanksgiving, and I say, uh, thanks, Amy, that's a good dinner that, that you made tonight. Right? Then I enter to the next court. Um, you look beautiful today. That's giving her praise. Right? And then you enter to the next court. I love you. And that's bringing it to the holy place. I guess to that intimate, to that intimate space. That's where God wants to end up with us. God wants to end up with thankful, but God wants to end up with us being intimate with Him. And that for, when you when you're intimate, you produce life. <clears throat> so, all that being said, I think, and I hope this is okay, Pastor. Um, and I hope this is okay with everybody else. With all this, I, I, as I was sitting there today, and we're talking about bail, uh, bail going in tomorrow for surgery, and, and, and that whole thing going on, I think we need to bring forth a shout of victory before, the, before, even, the, uh, before even the surgery. Let the victory be shouted forth first. So is anybody in agreement with me? If somebody's in agreement, can you stand up, please? I'm going to take this off because I don't want to blow anybody's ears off. <laughs>